Hi everybody, in this video, we're gonna learn about one of the most important things you have in React. Not components, not props, not transferring props, or styling them even, but it's something called state. So here's the thing. The components we've been working with so far, they've been considered stateless. They have props passed into them, but that's pretty much it. They don't really have any unique values of their own. They aren't really doing anything that would be considered, I guess, intelligent or stateful, where they have some memory of what's going on. And the reason why that's important is this. As part of building our apps, we're not gonna have very stateless, very unintelligent components. We wanna be able to change parts of our components as a result of some form of user interaction, or it could be even passive user interaction like data being returned from a server or a billion other things like a button click or a timer running and so on. What we really want is a way to be able to store data in a way that can be changed, something that isn't very static and very lifeless, like just props or just variables that are initialized and set on our objects and our components by default. What we need is something called state. So to make sense of this, we've been creating an app from scratch for the past few examples, but for this one, you know, I think we've gotten beyond the point of learning how to define a component and being able to set up our project and so on. So instead, I have a starting point for our app already created. So if you are up for just going to follow along, go and go to bit.ly slash reactstate. You'll see a code pen of the example that we're trying to work with. Here's what the pen looks like. It contains a lot of the starting point for what we're going to do. And I will jump back to this code in a second. But the example that we're going to be creating is one that looks like this. It's a simple counter of how many lightning strikes happen worldwide. I was reading this interesting statistic that pretty much for every second, about 100 lightning strikes happen somewhere around the world. So that's a pretty fascinating number. Like imagine 100 lightning strikes every second. And so we create a counter that basically displays the number of lightning strikes that have happened since this example was refreshed. So right now you can see this counter is increasing every second by a value of 100, and we're displaying that right now. Now, not the most crazy, complicated example that you can imagine, but it's definitely good to get our feet wet with working with state. And so to follow along, make sure to go to the URL I suggested. You'll be at the, the code pen location where you can write code in line, and you'll see it updating in real time. But I'm a big fan of Visual Studio Code. So the exact same code we see in CodePen, you're gonna see right here in VS Code as well. The same example is currently being displayed on the right-hand side. So you can see a live preview of what's going on as well. So before we go on though, let me just walk through what we have in our example right now. So we have a component called Lightning Counter Display. That is the gateway to application. It is the component we're calling from a React DOM.render call. And this Lightning Counter Display component has some styles and it calls, it's a wrapper for the lightning counter component, which really has nothing going on for it. It is just a very simple component. It is returning a heading one tag of hello, which is what you see currently displayed in our browser. So it's pretty, pretty simple as starting points go and as examples go as well. So what we're gonna do is first figure out a way to get store use state to display the counter and increment a counter as time goes on. So the first thing we're gonna do is this. What we wanna do is have a value that we can increment, an initial value that we can start from, zero, and then increment by 100 every second. The value we're gonna be using is what's known as a state. It's basically a central location where we can have some data that can be stored and updated and modified as time goes on. And so the way you use state is this. A state is just one of those internal objects that you just need to need to deal with that React provides. And so we're gonna initialize them by using the constructor. So I'm gonna do constructor, props, context, the two arguments that you can pass in. Props is the one you really want, but I'll just pass context in as well, especially if you start using some of the more advanced functionalities of React, you'll be happy to have the access to the context as well. So what I'm gonna do in the constructor, which runs way before a component does anything, is initialize a state object and set our, a value to zero, which will be the beginning point of our counter. So constructor props context, and it's also called the, co the constructor for the, for the parent React version of all of this. And now I'm gonna type in this.state equals, and state is an object, and it's gonna have a value called strikes, which is gonna be initialized to zero. All right, so what we've just done is initialize our state object, which is 
seems like a very simple everyday kind of occurrence, but the state object is something that is built into React, like I mentioned earlier. So it is special in that sense. And all, we, all it does is just a property bag. It just, it's an object where you just provide properties and values that you want to have stored as data in, that is localized to just this particular component. All right, we have strikes set to zero. And so nothing crazy going on here so far. And let's go ahead and change what is displayed in hello to be the value of our strikes property located at our straight object. And so for that, I'm gonna change it to this dot state dot strikes. So just like with props, the way you access the strikes property is by accessing this dot state and then calling strikes directly on it, which also makes sense because we are explicitly declaring this dot state in our constructor. So it's a little bit unlike props in that you never actually do this dot props equals and then specifying all the various objects. All right, so if you refresh the page right now, we should see a zero, pretty simple. And so far, at least it's a good sanity check to make sure things are working fine. So what we wanna do though, is start a counter. And this counter will be responsible for, at every second, incrementing the value of strikes by 100. So the way we're gonna do that is by using what's known as a lifecycle method. We'll look at lifecycle methods in much greater detail later, but for example, when you load an HTML page, you know a bunch of events get fired. For example, DOM content loaded, just as your DOM has been loaded, and the load event, when both the DOM and all the resources you're trying to access in that page have all been fully set up by the browser. So you have various events that fire as part of your page, just you know, launching, loading, and then ultimately being navigated away from and just being destroyed. Similarly, in React, you have similar event-like systems that need to be, that you need to handle various parts of your components being mounted, being updated, being rendered, and then being destroyed. And one such thing is called component did mount. Now the event, you know, think of these as event handlers for events that have already been hard coded. So just as our component is about to hit the DOM, hit the visual tree and start, start running, there's an event that gets called. That event calls the function or method called component did mount. And so what we're gonna do is go ahead and call component did mount and write some code here that's gonna start up our timer. So component did mount, this is gonna get called automatically as part of our, as part of our component running. We're gonna have this dot timer tick 1000. So what this means is every 1000 milliseconds, one second, the timer tick method is going to be called. Now, where's the timer tick method? That's a good question. It's not there yet. Let's go ahead and define that next. So timer tick, let me capitalize it properly. And inside timer tick, what we're gonna do is update the value of our state property. Now you might think that the way I'm gonna modify the strikes properties our state object is by just doing this dot state dot strikes plus or equals 100. Now this isn't wrong. It probably will not work. And the reason is this. The way you deal with state, state is not your everyday property, everyday object that you can just modify as you wish. Like I mentioned earlier, it's one of those things that is built into React. So there's a very formal way you're recommended to actually set the state. And that is by calling a set state method. So this dot set state, and this takes one argument, which is really the new value for your strikes property. And we look later at the multiple ways you can actually specify the current state, but the easiest way is this. So this dot set state, and what I'm gonna specify here is the new object that will be specified to you know, provide the new value for our strikes property. So let me modify the spacing a little bit. Okay, this dot set state, and the object is gonna contain exactly one property, strikes, and its value will be this dot state dot strikes plus 100. And what this means is that every time the timer take method gets called, we create a new state object and overwrite the current one with the value that we're specifying right here. One of the big things that I'll touch upon a little bit later is that the way you wanna do a lot of updates in React is not by mutating existing data, but by providing a whole new instance of the data instead, instead of a new value. So instead of incrementing the existing value of strikes, just provide a new value of strikes altogether. Now, by calling this that say that strikes, I'm kind of in a little gray area where I'm kind of using the old value as part of the new value, and we'll look at like what the proper way, what the recommended way of dealing with that is if you are concerned about data purity, as, as we say. 
All right, so now we have our app. Let's go and refresh the page, see what happens. Now, you might think that by doing this, the app should sort of start working because after all, this gets called automatically, so that interval gets called, and our timer tick method should be working and doing what it should be doing. But the reality is that it's not going to fully work, and here's the reason why. The reason is that one of the things in React, and especially as part of using the class syntax, is the value of this isn't always as straightforward as you might want it to be. Right now, what we're doing here in our timer tick method is specifying that the value of this is going to be tied to the component somehow. But in reality, it's not tied to that at all. It's actually tied to something. You know, we don't want to get into too much detail of it here. But the thing you need to keep in mind is that you need to bind the value of this explicitly to our lightning counter component in this case, because that's where we're trying to access all of the values from. And so the way we do that is by using the bind keyword. There's an ES6 method using the arrow functions, but I like the bind keyword a lot, mostly because the React documentation tends to use it a whole lot. So therefore, if you are ever stuck or if you need to go beyond what I'm providing, you'll be able to find some familiar content on the React official website. So I'm going to type in this.timerTick equals this.timerTick.bind this and close this right here. Okay, now once I've done this, what I'm basically specifying is that the value of this in the timer tick method is going to be bound to the value of this particular component itself. So now if I go and hit refresh, everything should work fine. You can see now our counter is incrementing. Now, this might seem like a very bizarre thing, and it does take some getting used to, but this is not specific to state or what we're trying to do here. It's something that every time you're going to find you have a method and you're trying to access some property that is on this component as a whole, you're going to have to do something like this. So you'll see us using this particular approach for binding the value of this correctly for event handling for a variety of variety of different situations. But the important thing to note is that as part of building this example, we now have a state object with a state strikes property that's now getting updated every single time. And notice one more thing. The timer is running and as the timer is running, the value that we're printing here from a render method is getting called automatically. And that is because of this. Every time your state changes, your component's render method gets called automatically. You don't have to do anything extra because state, just like props, is one of those values that if it were to be updated, it kind of triggers to react, it sends a signal that our data might be out of sync with what's being displayed on screen. So go ahead and do a render pass to make sure that if things have changed, go ahead and update what the user sees. So this is actually what caused our app to automatically. It's just a built-in special functionality that states just have in React. So there are three things we looked at as part of working in learning about how to work with state. The first one is using the state object and using the set state method to be able to pass values in to update the values of what we have in our state. So we'll call that. The second one is reacting to component did mount. And so like I mentioned, one of the things we have in React are lifecycle methods, and component did mount is one of them that gets automatically called every time our component it just gets it gets attached to the DOM but hasn't really done anything crazy. And then the last thing we looked at was dealing with this and just the, the craziness involved in making sure it points to the right item. And that's more of an ES6 thing, not a React specific thing. So if you are irritated by that, you know, that irritation should be directed not at the at the awesome React developers, but more at the at just the design of the JavaScript language, especially in the ES6 world. So before we wrap things up though, I just want to touch upon a few small things. The way we're calling set state right now is by just calling set set state and we're writing a new object in. And like I mentioned, the way we're passing the new object is by overwriting the existing value and then using this at state that strikes a reference an existing value to update it. Now that isn't always preferred because there is a slight amount of data mutation going on where I'm referencing an older value as part of creating a new value, which is okay in many cases, but in large apps, especially in apps where you're making many, many changes at the same time, you might get into you know, situations where your data is a little bit out of sync because this let's say that strikes might be referring to an older value than what you think it might be referring to. So the preferred approach is to do something like this. You can use a callback function that provides the previous state as an argument and use that to provide a way of being able to, to update the existing value. So the setState method allows for a callback function 
and the previous value of the state is provided for you automatically. So you can use any argument name you want. I just use prev state because it just, uh, it just seemed like the, you know, succinct, 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 that's the right pronunciation, but also not too verbose. And so I'm able to return a new strikes object where I have an entirely new strikes object based on a previous value and then increment that by 100. That kind of avoids some of the race conditions you might be running into. And if you're not familiar with this particular syntax, it's really just a variation of just calling function and providing an argument directly as opposed to doing something that involves having a separate method and things like that that goes on. And so that's really all there is to working with state. It's one of those things that makes our apps a little bit more lively and more interactive because as of now, before this video, our apps really haven't been doing much except displaying some static data, but now they have the ability to react to changes in data. And because state updates cause a render call automatically, that reaction to data can often also lead to an update to the visuals, which is really what we need in many cases because so much of the time, all we're really doing is taking some data from somewhere or react reacting to some user interaction from somewhere and displaying the updated results of that interaction having completed. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post in the forums at forum.crypto.com where I and others would be pretty happy to help you out. Tell your friends and enemies all about this because why not? That's what makes you a good human being. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos. Follow me at Krupa for 280 character updates. It's great to say that instead of 140 of updates on just things that I find interesting in the web development world, cat videos, science stuff, just things that might be, might be interesting for you to, to look at. And of course, there's a book available that I wrote called Learning React where I go into much greater detail about all of this and more. And so feel free to check that out if you are so inclined. All right, guys, I will see you all next time.